Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this Lisa Frank in 90s inspired tumbler that mimics paint splatter with a little hint of leopard detail as well. I wanted to create this cup because I was raised in the 90s and loved everything neon and rocked the Lisa Frank paint splatter on several of my trapper keepers and other school supplies. I also have a true love of 90s country music so I had to put the lyrics from one of my favorite Garth Brooks songs on this custom tumbler too and I think it turned out super cute. As always, all the products I've used will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, I wanted to take a step back and show how I prep my tumblers. This is a 30 ounce straight skinny and I just removed it from the box, stuck my hand on the inside of it and grabbed my 60 grit sanding block. And what I'm doing is I'm just making my way around the cup just to rough up the surface and remove that coating that is on the outside. You can see that it goes from shiny to dull and that's really what you want to see to ensure that your cup is nice and fully prepped before moving on to the next step. I then remove the sticker on the bottom and then just continue to sand just so I have the entire surface of the tumbler nice and scuffed up and ready for the next steps. After I am done sanding, I spray down the cup with 90% alcohol and I just use a coffee filter to wipe down the entire surface. You'll see that there's a bunch of black grit that is left over that you're just going to remove and then I let that dry fully before moving into the next step. For the base coat of this tumbler, I am using Miss Lillian's Bright White No Wax Chalk Pink and just like a cheap wet and wild makeup brush from the dollar store or you can get these at Walmart too. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to paint on the base layer um, of coloring, even though it's just white on this cup. And the reason why I am switching to this paint versus spray paint, it's just spray paint has been so hard to find. I do not want to go outside when it's cold and I've really had some problems with having to fully wait for the spray paint to degas before moving into the next steps. With this paint, each layer I can get dry in two to three minutes with a heat gun and even without the heat gun it is dry in about 10 minutes and I just get awesome coverage and I don't have to go outside or stop what I'm doing at my crafting station to do a single step. So I highly recommend this paint. I absolutely love it. It just has amazing coverage. It goes on so well. You need just the tiniest tiny bit to really cover your cup. And you can see here that this is just one coat of paint and how well it really covers that stainless steel. And here I'm just using my heat gun. This is not a requirement. It's just I'm impatient and um, wanted to get this dry. But I just move the cup around and just use my heat gun at the lowest setting because if you use it on high, the paint will bubble because it gets too hot. And then I immediately move into my second coat and you can just absolutely see just how wonderful that coverage is. This cup really didn't need a second coat, but just because of how anal and a perfectionist I am when it comes to my cups, I did want to add that second layer. We will be absolutely covering this 100%. So again, it didn't need it, but I just wanted to show you guys best practices instead of cutting any corners, but you guys can obviously make the decision for yourself and what makes the most sense for your tumblers. While the tumbler was drying with that second coat of paint, I mixed up about 10 milliliters of Artistry's two to one fast set uh, medium viscosity epoxy. And the reason why I chose this one is because it's thinner than a one to one fast set, but it dries faster than their regular epoxy. So this was absolutely perfect for this design. And what I'm doing is I'm just applying enough epoxy to the cup to allow for enough adhesive of my glitters. And that's really all you need to do. And then I come in and start to apply my glitters just like I would any normal Milky Way. So going in that spiral kind of shape or pattern, this is Silver Stardust from Bougie Glitter Boutique. This glitter actually has not released yet, but I'm so excited. It is absolutely beautiful. It is a white and silver mix. And then I grabbed Wonder from Bougie Glitter Boutique and I came in right underneath it. Now, the reason why I started with Silver Stardust is because that was really what I wanted the focal point of my glitter to be. So because it was the favorite, my favorite one, the one that was really pulling everything together, that's why I put it there in the center. Then I moved into Wonder and then this is Wedding Bells from Bougie Glitter Boutique. So I'm just coming in, following that first spiral that I laid down and just ever so slightly overlapping the um, 
next color that I'm using over the previous one just so that I don't have any bare spots. And then I come in with diamonds. This is a mix of different holographic cuts, again, from Bougie Glitter Boutique, and I absolutely love it. And I thought this would be a really great combination to keep with that white and silver theme that we are going for. So just continuing the spiral, you can see just how well that diamonds really covers. And then I'm also carrying some of the glitters just on the bottom of the cup. Um, not really any rhyme or reason, but just really making sure that I'm getting coverage on the bottom because you might be able to see it when we get after, or not when, but after we apply our micas and our glitters in the following step. The next glitter I'm using is called Pure Grace, and this is a matte white, and I wasn't sure about choosing this at first, but I'm so glad I did. It just added some really, really nice dimension to the overall look of this cup, and I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. And this is another one from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And then finally, I finished the last gap with um, unicorns and rainbows from Bougie, and just kind of covered in any of those missing spots. Once I was happy with the coverage, I put all the rest of my extra glitter away, and then I just simply rolled my tumbler on a piece of cardstock. I know there are all kinds of different ways to do it. This is just what I had on hand and it works for me every time. So I just roll it sideways and then make sure to get the bottom. I let that glitter dry for a couple of hours and then I added two coats of Artistry's 2 to 1 Fast Sets, let that cure. And now it was time to hit the top of the cup with the Dremel just to expose that little bit of stainless steel. I also came in after the fact and sanded the cup really well with my orbital just to knock down any pokey bits and get it nice and smooth and you can see it here I'm sorry I did not record me sanding it but then it was time to come in and add all of our beautiful micas that are going to lay the groundwork for our paint splatter that we'll be adding to this cup so I actually mixed up 60 milliliters of Artistry's 2 to 1 Fast Set, and I am just applying a thin layer of that epoxy over the entire surface of the cup. This step right here is super important before you apply your other micas to the cup because this is what allows you to get a little bit of that movement and the nice kind of whimsy of the micas when you apply them to the surface of your tumbler. After I have the coat of epoxy on the tumbler, I divide the rest of the epoxy into these different medicine cups. The first color, which you see there, which is the white, is Moonlight from Unicorn Dust Micas. And then I moved into the yellow, which is an amazing yellow. It's called Lemon Drop, again, from Unicorn Dust Micas. And also, all of these neons glow in the dark, so I absolutely love them. But I moved from the um, Lemon Drop to Tangerine Dream. And then I'm also using my medicine cup holder from Design Lingo, and I absolutely love this because I am prone to knock over micas when I'm using them. So I'll link it in the description below. But there I am mixing up pink voltage and I just love this pink. It is so vibrant and absolutely beautiful. And then I moved into Line Sorbet, which is also from Unicorn Dust Micas. Just taking my time to mix up the micas really well um, so that you don't have any lumpy bits in your um, swirls. And then I finished it off with Plum Crazy, which again is a neon purple and it's just absolutely beautiful. So you can just see how well these colors work together. And again, all the micas I'm using are from Unicorn Dust Micas and there's a link below in the description. Once I have the micas all mixed up, I let them sit for a couple of minutes. And the reason why I do this is because I like them to be a little bit thicker when I apply them to the cup because I feel like I have a little more control and they don't move as quickly because a lot of times like you want some movement, but not a lot. And so if you have super thin epoxy with your micas in it, it's just gonna turn out into a muddy mess. So I probably let them sit between five and 10 minutes. And then I started with the Plum Crazy because it was the darkest color. And I really wanted to start the overall swirl of this cup. Then I definitely moved into the pink voltage, as you can see there. And I said definitely because this is just such an amazing pink mica. I absolutely love it. And I wanted to really kind of play off the different silver vibes that met the white glitter. So that's really where I wanted to focus on the primary placement of the micas and definitely with the purple and pink because they just are so vivid. Um, I just added them along these lines and I am using the glitter lines as a guide, but not perfectly because you do want this to kind of be organic. And again, it's supposed to be paint splatter. So you don't want it to just look like you added perfect stripes onto your cup. Now this is the Tangerine Dream and there really wasn't a right or wrong or 
any reasoning behind how I added these to the cup. It was just kind of where I felt like the placement was the best. And I just really start at the top and then continue the line all the way down the cup. Now, one thing I do want to call out because this irks me all the time is that I always try and make sure to really run the mica over the end of the top of the tumbler. A lot of times when you see different Milky Ways, like people stop too short, like you stop too short and then you can just see these globs of mica at the top of the tumbler. Really make sure to run the micas all the way up over the edge. It's not gonna be a big deal over the edge and then smooth them out over the surface. So you don't have those huge globs of mica and epoxy mixes that just really take away from the overall design. So I added the lime sorbet, which is the green. And then here I'm coming in with the lemon drop and just really adding that vivid, vivid color. Now, I purposely left that kind of thicker chunk, which I told you was the Silver Stardust glitter there because we will be adding more details, but that was on purpose, but you could easily cover that with mica if you so choose. After the mica had been spinning for a little bit, I came in with a freshly gloved finger, so there was no mica pigments on there, and I just came in with both the pad of my finger and my fingernail to kind of separate the like thick stripes that we had laid down. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted it to look truly like paint splatter. So those harsh lines that we had added just really didn't work for this design. Um, I did want it to look more like the cape plant or the paint hit the cup and then just kind of stuck every which way. So that's what this was. And then what you can't see or what you can kind of kind of see is that in between each color, I am wiping my finger off on the paper towel so that I can prevent any kind of cross-contamination of the colors because I really wanted to keep them each unique so that we can move into the next steps and I promise it will make more sense. But after I got all of the colors nice and separated, I did come in with the Moonlight, and again, this is from Unicorn Dust Micas, and just added little details here and there and kind of just added this little like bit of shimmer, I would say, over the top of some of the sections of the mica pigments. You could skip this step. I just liked it and it added just a really nice little detail. After the cup had been turning for a while, um, I just came in and I sprinkled some bougie bling, which this is just a really pretty opal. And I just wanted to add a little bit of extra sparkle over the top of the micas. And I thought it was a really nice detail. You could obviously skip this step. I feel like I've been saying that a lot this tutorial, but I just liked it to the just added little pop um, over the micas. And it just was really just, I think it did add a lot of depth to the different colors that we had added. I then decided that uh, bougie bling wasn't just enough, so I did end up grabbing the silver starlight. It kind of came through and added some more little sparkle here and there over the colors of the micas. It was, it actually, it did not add too much. I think it really came out nicely, but I wanted to even out the white to silver additions that we had on the cup, and it's just me being extra, but I think it's super cute, and I like how it did add some more oomph to the overall look. Once I was done tinkering, I let this cup dry for about six hours. Then I came in with a second coat of epoxy, let that dry for, actually I let it dry overnight and then we are ready to move into our true glitter paint splatters that you see me starting right here. Now I'm probably not going to show you every bit of this step because even though it doesn't take too long, it's just a lot of repetition. So what I'm doing here, just to kind of explain it, is I'm taking a needle nose bottle and it's got the devil's glue, also known as Mod Podge in it. And I am highlighting the darkest parts of the mica pigments. So not all of them, I'm not making a stripe, but I'm following kind of the, like the, strands almost of what like what you could call it of the mica pigments and i'm covering them with mod podge and then i'm coming in with bubble gum from bougie glitter boutique to cover those different parts of the cup now i have no idea why i'm holding the cup like this like this is seriously i've never done this before it looks weird like i'm holding i don't know so ignore that part but i'm just continuing to move down the stripe and just you can see there i'm just highlighting the different parts of the pink until i have the whole stripe done don't forget the bottom and then i move in to dreamsicle from bougie glitter boutique again and i'm just again highlighting the darkest parts of where the mica strands are i'm gonna call i call them strands because that's kind of what they look like it's almost like where you have these strands of hair and where you have 
multiple strands it's where you want to cover it with the mod podge and where you just have one or two you're just going to kind of let it be there because it's just going to add depth to the overall and i'm saying this in air quotes i know you can't see it but the overall um paint splatter that we are adding to this cup now again i chose to add the glitter like this if you liked the way it looked and you liked it just with the traditional milky way you can absolutely not do this you don't have to i just liked it because it added a lot more neon colors to it um, and really made the different stripes pop while also working together with the mica pigments that we laid down but again you can skip it this is just how i created this cup and i think it really paid off now I'm moving into the green section and I use lily pad again following the exact same steps that I was showing you before but just showing how I add it overall to the cup. Now the green color was the one mica that I did have mixed the most. It mixed both with the orange and the pink just because I had um, dropped like little droplets in that space but I feel like it actually added some dimension. So I just came over again following the groundwork that the micas laid out and it worked really nicely and it looks really cute actually where the green kind of fell into the orange and where like the pink popped through the green. So I just literally followed again, I know I'm sounding repetitive, but just kind of followed the roadmap and it worked out really, really nicely. Here it is yellow's turn and this is lemon yellow and I just thought this yellow was just so perfect for this. It's like a really great neon yellow. I think it would also be great for like softball or tennis balls just because it's just it's that true like neon yellow color. So exact same thing following the steps of the previous micas that we had laid down and just adding the glitter every which way. I will tell you though that while I'm adding the Mod Podge and I think this is super important to call out that I am feathering the ends and I don't know that you can see it right there but I'm not just leaving like harsh blobs of the Mod Podge on the cup. I'm actually squeezing the glue out and then using the needle nose that you see on this bottle to kind of make it a little more jagged, just so it's like the definite like 90s paint splatter designs that you see out there. Because if you just had like globs of um, Mod Podge on there and then covered it with the glitter, it wouldn't give you the right aesthetic. So the needle nose on this bottle is doing double the work because not only is it laying the glitter down, but it's also helping me to get like those little wispies at the end of the glitter um, so that it really gives it the right overall look instead of just like a bunch of gloppiness everywhere on the cup. Last but not least is purple. And for this glitter, I'm using blue violet. And one thing also I wanna note that I let the Mod Podge fully dry before I moved into the next coat of glitter. So I would apply one glitter color, let that dry for about an hour, two hours, maybe even three hours. Then I would come in with the next color. And I did that on purpose because I did not want any cross contamination between colors. If you were on a tight deadline, I'm sure you can make it work and maybe just work 30 minutes because Mod Podge dry so quickly but I really wanted to take my time and make sure that I didn't have any chance of cross-contamination so that's why I waited so long between colors but that's just me um and yeah I let the paint splatter dry for um, probably six hours, sealed it, did a coat of epoxy, and now we are adding detail to that little blank area that I had mentioned earlier in the tutorial. And what I'm doing here is I actually grabbed um, Comet Dust, which is a holographic silver glitter, and I am adding leopard spots in that middle section of the cup. Now, I almost didn't do this, but if you look at a lot of Lisa Frank's old designs, or just not old, we don't need to, we don't need that word in our vocabulary right now. But if you look at Lisa Frank's designs, she has a lot of leopard print in there. And I went back and forth between doing them like a bright neon blue or a silver because we had so much silver throughout. And I chose to do silver because I wanted it just to be subtle. I didn't want it to be in your face and take away from the paint splatter. So I am just coming through and I am painting leopard print in that center stripe um, that I had mentioned previously or earlier on. So I actually have a cup off screen that you can't see that I am using for reference because I really do need that visual representation for me to follow for leopard print. Otherwise it just comes out horrible. But I'm doing probably like between one to three leopard spots, adding the glitter and then just covering it um, nice and making sure I get great coverage. So 
that's just how, what works for me. Absolutely do what works for you. But I did that center stripe. And then there were a couple of other places that weren't quite covered with the mica, which I loved actually, because I was able to add these just like subtle, subtle little leopard details to the cup. And I think it came out so cute. So there was one at the bottom. And then if you turn it around a little bit, there was a little white spot right there. And I continued to add just a little more leopard. And I thought that was just like enough placement that worked out really, really well. And I think it was just enough to add to this design. Going back, I don't know if I would have stuck with silver just because it did get lost a little bit. I know I said this is what I was going for, but I'm not sure if maybe like another like neon color would have been a better choice or maybe multiple different colors of leopard print um, to really make it pop. But that was just me. But I let that dry. Then I uh, brushed off any excess, sealed it, went into two coats of epoxy, and then it was time to add the decal. Now this decal will be listed down in the description below. It was one that I actually designed, and I don't know if you can tell by the hands, but this is actually my husband applying the vinyl decal. Um, he is my vinyl whiz. He is so good at it, so I figured I would let him do this portion of the design or of the tutorial, but uh, this was cut out and layered with, I did a Cricut textured vinyl and platinum on the bottom, and then I used three different neon color vinyls from Oracle, and I will list all of those in the description below. But the decal actually says, ain't going down till the sun goes up. I absolutely love that song. Um, it's one of my favorite Garth Brooks songs, so um, I highly recommend it. But there you can see he's applying the orange vinyl he had already done the pink and then here is the yellow for the sun um but i just love this decal and it's just so cute and i think it was the perfect way to end my 90s inspired cup didn't nick do a good job i love the way it turned out so just because i had layered the vinyl and there were so many different um kind of pieces of vinyl to it. I am going to seal this or at least show you how I seal this. And when I say I, I'm going to say that Nick is doing this because you can see his hands right there. But this is a poly sealer. The one I'm using is from um, CC DIY, but you can use polyacrylic. Um, I actually prefer polyacrylic because it has a lot more resistance to yellowing. But what you can see is that he is just squirting a little bit of that over the decal. And then I let that dry for about 40 minutes before I move into my my final coats of epoxy. For the final coats of epoxy, I use Artistry Epoxy's just regular formula. I really like this stuff because it's just the right viscosity for me. And I knew I wanted to add two final coats of epoxy, so it was just spot on. So I applied my first coat, waited for about 12 hours, and then I came in and applied my second, which translates into I applied the first coat, let it dry overnight, and then it came in the next morning, um, applied my second coat, and then I let that dry for about eight to 12 hours, and it was perfect and ready to go. Each one of those coats was about 20 to 25 milliliters, and this baby was done. I am pretty sure that I'm going to have to keep this cup for myself because I'm obsessed with how it turned out. I love that it incorporated my favorite things from the 90s, which makes my heart smile. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you are notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.